Hey guys, it's Charles of Premium B, and in this tutorial, I want to show you how to create a watercolor painting look in After Effects with no plugins required. We'll also look at how you can easily adjust the look depending on your footage and how you can use it with things like transitions or even add in some wiggle movement to the paint effect. Before we start, if you want to download the project file for this tutorial, it'll be located on the blog post, so check for that link in the description. The project file will also include an After Effects preset if you just want to be able to quickly drag and drop this effect onto any of your footage. Alright guys, let's get started and jump over to After Effects. Alright guys, I've got some HD footage already here in my composition. Depending on the size of your footage, maybe if you're working with 4K footage, you may need to adjust a few of the values that I go over, but we'll cover that a little bit later on. So I'm gonna first select my footage and let's come up to effect and come down to stylize and we're gonna apply the CC Repetile effect. And you're probably wondering why we're applying a Repetile effect. What well, actually has to do with the next effect we're gonna apply. I'll cover that in just a second. So on the expand, right, left, up and down, let's go ahead and just set each of these to 100. And under the tiling, we wanna set this to unfold. Now let's apply the next effect, and that's gonna be the CC Vector Blur. So under Blur and Sharpen, we're gonna select CC Vector Blur. And for the type on this effect, I wanna set this on constant length. And then for the amount, I wanna set this to 10. And then for the angle offset, I wanna set this to be 90 degrees. Now it's hard to tell if we zoom in on our footage here, we can see what this is doing, just kind of giving us this smudgy look. Go ahead and check this on and off. You can see it's getting rid of a lot of those fine details and it kind of almost gives it a little bit of a swirly look, and this is gonna work nicely with the next effect we're gonna apply. But if we come over here and actually turn off the CC Repetile effect, you're gonna see that CC Vector Blur kind of gives us a little bit of distortion here at the edges, and it's gonna, it's black, it's actually going all the way through to an alpha channel there, you can see that. So if we have that CC Repetile effect, we'll avoid having that kind of artifacting around the edges. Now the next effect we're gonna apply is really the core of creating this effect and that is the dust and scratches effect. So let's come over here to effect and come down here to noise and grain and you're gonna see dust and scratches. It's a little bit of an obscure effect, so let's go ahead and apply it. And what this effect is actually intended for is to remove dust and scratches obviously from footage. Most likely to be used on older footage you're trying to repair. But we're gonna kinda of hijack this effect and we're gonna really dial up this radius. So if we zoom in here, let's go ahead and crank this up to something like seven. And what that's gonna do, it's really gonna give us this smudgy look on our footage. You can already kinda see how this is giving it like a paint-like effect. And you can adjust this radius depending on the detail of your footage. With this particular shot, I think seven is a nice value, but you might experiment with different values with your shots. If I crank this up to 10, we're gonna see it's gonna smudge a little bit more. So I'm gonna set this back to seven because that's a nice starting point I feel like for most shots. One thing I do want to mention, guys, is that the CC Vector Blur and the Dust and Scratches effects both render quite slow. So if you experience slowdowns working with them, that's pretty normal. And when you go to RAM preview them, you might want to lower the resolution to something like half just to speed things up a little bit. But as it is right now, it looks a little bit almost out of focus and not necessarily completely like a paint-like effect. So let's boost up the sharpness on this. Now let's come up here to Effect. And under Blur and Sharpen, we're going to select the Unsharp Mask effect. And the idea with this, we're going to crank this up really high to bring out all the fine details and lines that are in this image. So on the radius, I'm actually gonna set this to two. And then on the amount, I'm gonna set this at 450. And now you can see our image is really popping and you kinda can see how we get that paint-like effect with everything here on the image. And if I just toggle on and off the effects here, you can see the difference we're getting. Finally, I like to plus this a little bit more with Lumetri Color. This is completely optional if you don't wanna do this. Let me come here to Effect. And then color correction, we'll go down to Lumetri Color. And I'm just gonna dial in a few settings here. So on basic correction, on the temperature, I like this to be a little bit warmer usually when I have this paint effect on. So I might set this to be five or 10. I'll just type in 10. And just adds a little bit of a warmer tone. And this really becomes apparent when you do like a transition into a paint-like effect. Just having that little slight color change really does a lot. And then under contrast, I'm gonna boost this up to 20. And then let's go to the creative options here. On faded film, I'm gonna set this to be 35. And then for the vibrance, let's go ahead and crank this up to 35 as well, just to kind of boost those colors. And then finally, let's come down here to vignette. And I'm gonna set the amount on this to be negative 1.5. 
And that's gonna give us a nice vignette around everything, drawing attention more to the center frame. Something you see pretty common with paintings, and I think it works for this particular look. And now we can go ahead and preview what this looks like on our footage. Now let's take a look at another shot I've got. This is a drone shot. And as I said before, you can adjust the dust and scratches radius here to add in more or less detail depending on your shot. And so in this case, with this shot, with the radius set at seven, it's a little smudgy. So I'm just gonna dial this down to something like four. And you can see that brings back in a lot more detail as far as like, you know, seeing things in the painting. So you'll definitely wanna play around with this setting depending on the footage you're gonna be working with. We can take a look at this other composition I've got here of this woman. You can see the radius is currently set to eight and the details, kind of fine details on her face there are kind of all smudged together. So we can dial this down to something like five. So we're still getting the paint-like effect. We're also retaining details so you can recognize people and things that are in your scene. Now let's take a look at how to create the transition effect that I showed kind of in the preview. And what I've got here is two copies of my footage. One has the paint effect applied to it. I'll go ahead and turn that off. You can see the original footage here with no effects applied to it at the bottom of the stack in our composition. So what I wanna do is I want to transition from the original footage into kind of the watercolor paint effect. And you can do this in many different ways. You can just do a fade transition or any other animated transition. What I'm gonna use is a luma matte transition that I've got here. It's actually included with the project file. If I double click on this and we scroll through, you're gonna see it does kind of this paint-like effect to just go from one shot to the next. So the idea here is we'll have one shot be mapped to the white and the other one to the black and it'll just transition that way. So we come back over to the composition. I want this to start probably about one second in. And so the top copy I've got here is the actual paint effect copy. I'm just gonna drag this over a little bit so that it basically starts at about one second. You can see where that goes. So I'm trimming that up. Now let's go ahead and drag in the paint transition. And I just wanna line this up to start at the same time as our paint clip there. And so what we wanna do is on the paint clip, I wanna select this under track matte. I'm gonna select Luma inverted matte because I actually want this to map to the black part of that footage. So you can see now as we go ahead and scroll through, we'll see there's the transition and then it switches over to the watercolor shot. Finally, let me show you guys how to add that stop motion wiggle effect to your footage or images. And I find this works really well on images in particular because you can really notice the subtleties of the movement. So I've got this image of these hikers here I'm gonna be working with and I've already applied kind of the watercolor effects to this. So now to add that movement in, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna do a new adjustment layer. I wanna make sure this is above my footage. And with that adjustment layer selected, let's go ahead and come up to effect. And under distort, we're gonna apply a turbulent displace. And for the amount, let's go ahead and set this to 10. And for the size, let's go ahead and set this to 20. And we need this to randomly change now on each frame in our composition. So what we can do is on evolution here, I'm gonna hold alt and click on the stopwatch there for evolution so we can add in an expression. And what we're gonna type in here is random, and then open parentheses, 359, and then close parentheses. So what this is doing is telling After Effects to give us a different evolution value for every frame when this plays back. And if we go ahead and preview this right now, we're gonna see it's kind of jarring on how quickly that's changing. And it doesn't really look like that stop motion effect we want. So a good solution to this is just to slow the frame rate down. And an easy way to do that is using the posterized time effect. So if we scroll back up here, I'm gonna select our adjustment layer, come up here to effect. I'm gonna come down here to time. This is just off the screen here, but it's gonna be posterized time. And what this allows us to do is adjust the frame rate from here. And so I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna change it from 24 to something like six. I find that six or four work really well. Now let's go ahead and RAM preview how this looks now. So now you can see since we've set this to a value of six, we're only getting six changes with that turbulent displays per second. And this looks a lot more pleasing to the eye and kind of gives it that catchy stop motion look. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Give us a thumbs up if you did, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.